have no idea what to do here. So this is tricky. Um, use music player on. You hit play, but nothing happens. You must be missing something. So I need to find... Batteries. Where would I find batteries? I think there are plenty of batteries here. Like in that thing here. But that would trigger the... the thing. The robot. Give me a battery. It's an enormous stack of tools, toys, of toys, tools, stuffed animals, maybe even before you can finish. Oh, here he comes, the robot. It doesn't seem like he's playing. Maybe I need to use something else on him. Like liquid detergent, the remote, soap, probably not a candle. You empty the entire bottle of this soap at the annihilator's feet. It attempts to walk towards you, but the soap proves too much. Oh, it's slipping away! It swings its arms and legs rapidly, trying to regain its footing, and falls flat on its mechanical face. If the robot seemed angry before, he's certainly furious now. Unfortun fortunately, he can't even see you. It's too slippery for him to stand back up. There's a panel on his back that could probably be popped open. With a screwdriver, I suppose. You carefully unscrew the panel on the back of the robot. Ah, give me those batteries. Put those thingies in. So, ghost. It's time, I got your music. It's the only music in the house. Press play and a funky tune plays on the speakers. The boy is smart, swaying back and forth to the rhythm. He vanishes, his presence bounding away from the house. A door directly above you unlocks with a loud thunk. That is the master bedroom. Woo! That is the master bedroom. Right? Yes. It's an overwhelmingly creepy twist on your parents' bedroom. You kneel down and locate the chest combination lock. You will need to input the correct code. Another bed I can sleep in. Artwork, artwork. You undo the latch and swing the window open. What the fuck is that? Oh, it's the gargoyle. Taste? No, I'm not tasting the... A thick, gummy liquid is slowly dripping from the gargoyle's fangs. I'm gonna taste it. You hold your tongue out to catch a drop of the jelly. Tastes decent enough, but things take a disastrous turn. Your tongue feels especially heavy at first, then you feel your facial muscles locking in place. You try to run, but you can't move anymore. You trip and fall, solid to the floor. You turn your head just enough to see the truth. You've been turned to stone. Are you right? Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, uh, I mean, the game talked about that. That uh, gargoyle saliva turns things to stone, right? Or gargoyles in general. So it... it okay. So here I am again. Elevator to nowhere. Did that open? Where do I find the correct code? The bed is seriously uncomfortable. Artwork. The artwork on the wall is different. The signatures say Claude Moaning. Claude Moaning again. There's nothing else in here. But I need to do something with that thing. I still have 
soap. No, that's not working. Can I clean it with my sponge? No. Do you want to eat some jelly? Feeling vaguely hungry, you decide to bust out the jam. It's sweet and tart, just the way you like it. It reminds you of the PB&J they served at camp last year. Okay, nothing for the gargoyle, though. I don't know why I'm carrying all that shit with me. Let's take some of it. You hold out the empty container, making sure to catch several big bloppy... Several big bloopy drops out drops of the substance as it runs off the gargoyle's mouth. So it turns things to stone, right? There are several rusted areas, it's seen better days. So something is up with that pipe. It doesn't take much, the pipe bursts open and gobs of gross goop gush out. Maybe... is that the... the sh oh wait, it, it is the same thing underground in the... Another sink, right? So that didn't do anything, right? Yeah, yeah, maybe my only chance is to... We won't light it up, I guess. Something I don't like about those type of games is that there is so much trial and error. It's not always very logical, you know. You hurriedly open the bottle and empty its contents into the green slime. Tension hangs in the air. The spots of the gargoyle saliva touch solid solidify, hardening into grey stone. The effect spreads until the entire floor is covered in petrified sludge. Ah. Good. Now I can go on top of the attic. How do I get my shrunken head? The attic is about as spooky as you'd expect. Do it grime cow cobwebs and big ornate mirror. It's the most expensive mirror you've ever seen. The frame is extremely ornate and metal. I maybe. The image as has a depth to it you've never experienced. So that's me, I suppose. Boxes, surge. You sift through the boxes, giving each one a cursory glance. Nothing jumps out at you. That's great. Piñata. No thanks. If you're that desperate for candy, there are plenty of other options. Cavity City comes to mind. You hear muffled laughter? From where? The window provides a single beacon through the musty darkness of the attic. You feel an icy hand on your shoulder. Look, lady. did say something about shrunken hats, right? Hmm. That didn't do the job. I have a mirror too. You spin to face the reflection holding out the hand mirror you've been carrying. The image shudders and the crack explodes across the glass. Oh. A faceless voice screams, the mirror shatters, and everything falls silent. I was your evil twin. Goosebumps. It's a Goosebumps story called Let's Get Invisible. You used to read Goosebumps all the time when you were a kid. Of course, you knew that dummy on TV looked familiar. It was Slappy, the evil ventriloquist's dummy. But what am I doing up here then? 
くり。You're worried about leaving something important be Oh, I can take it. R. L. Stein. If only you had a way to get a hold of him somehow, maybe he'd know what to do. If his goosebumps monsters are real, everyone's in a lot of trouble. You'd better get to the mall. To the mall? I mean, we took care of the ghosts here, yeah, but... You walk back downstairs feeling much lighter than you have since arriving. The rooms are all still off, but it feels less like a haunted house and more like your house again. You hop down the stairs, mind racing for a way to reach the mall when a solution stumbles clumsily through the door. Chad, my boy. You slam directly into your brother as you leap down the stairs. He barely seems to notice. Hey, Donna, glad you're here. You see all this crazy stuff going on? I know, right? Are you okay? Huh, not really, he says. While looking around, making sure the coast is clear. I realized something about mom and dad, why they've been acting so weird lately. They are monsters? Oh no, of course, it makes perfect sense. When did those creatures replace our parents? Huh? No, no, no. Our parents are the same as they've always been. No, what I was trying to say is even more shocking, I'm not their son at all. Oh shit. You're adopted. I can prove it, Dana, you will see. Mom keeps important documents in the trunk at the foot of their bed. You go up and get my birth certificate. Normally, you would completely ignore everything he just said. Even by chat standards, this latest theory is ridiculous. However, today, today it might just work to your advantage. I'll make you a deal since you're my brother, you know, probably. I go get your birth certificate, but afterwards you have to give me a ride to the mall. I know how to stop these monsters, but I can't do it with you without your help. Do we have a deal? Sounds like we have a deal, and you will get the birth certificate, so my fingerprints are nowhere to be seen. Uh, and I'll drive you to the mall afterward. Good. Remember, the certificates. The certificate is upstairs in mom's and dad's room. In the trunk, the code to unlock is 1992. Okay, all right. We move left, uh, right. Now there are no more monsters around. And we're gonna open the trunk. Clue thunk. The trunk locks disengages and its lid pops open slightly. You lift it the rest of the way. Among other things, your brother's birth certificate is in the trunk. That must be what he was after. You carefully roll up the birth certificate and head downstairs. Well, what does it say though? Your brother's birth certificate clearly indicates mom and dad are his parents. Your brother Chad, he has a wild theory about his upbringing. Mm -hmm. Come on, Chad. Don't be such a Chad and get your certificate and, you know, be my, bra be my brother. My bro, you happily present the birth certificate, eager to receive your end of the bargain. I guess I was wrong, he says sadly, poorly hiding that the air has been knocked out of him. Chad shakes his head, I was so certain. Why would you, like... Why? You clear your throat, so about that ride to the mall? Oh right, he's certainly shaping up to be a pleasant companion. If it's that important, let's get going. He leaves the house, shuffling to his car while you follow. You hope that the drive improves his mood. Um. You're standing outside the haunted version of your house, your brother's... Your brother chats there too, he looks confused by the whole ordeal, but you can tell he's trying not to show it. How do I head back? So, how are we leaving to the mall? Or do I just talk to him? Still need a ride, Carrie did need the extra miles, but... Let's go. 
He forcefully nods towards the car, quite serious. You roll your eyes and add, thanks, Carrie. That's more like it. So where's the old girl taking us? To the mall, I guess. Like I said, I have to reach the town centre Galeria. I heard something about the mall being close today. Sure you want to go? Yeah. That's the whole reason why we're going there, remember? Duh, of course. Must have spaced. You both hop in the car and start toward the mall. The mall parking, the mall parking lot's completely empty when you arrive. Slappy and his monsters must already be inside. You get out of out of the car, the door echoing as you shut it. Chad places a hand on your shoulder. Good luck in this. Is I don't understand all that stuff you said, but these monsters sound pretty nasty. If anyone can stop Slippy, it's you. So weird. The lot is so empty, it's absolutely desolate. You'd never find spots this close on a regular day. The mall directory shows all the shops in the town center galeria. There's nothing useful in the trash, not even a hamburger. A, a hamburger would be useful, I'm quite... I'm actually a bit hungry. Oh my god, who's that behind the glass? You stand at the mall's entrance, working up your courage to go inside. You can vaguely see someone on the, on the other side of the glass. That looks like a robot pirate's cyborg. You press against the glass, straining to hear the figure on the other side. Somebody is talking in a heavy mechanical voice. Yes, sir. Nobody's getting in here without my security card. You can't, you can't tell who's on the other end or what he might be saying. No, of course not. I gave it to the beast from the east for safekeeping. He will probably do something strange with it, but who's going to overpower him? No, sir. My cover is intact. Nobody knows who I really am. Yes, I keep things quiet until he arrives. Do not worry, Mr. Slappy. So, the automatic door isn't opening. It must be locked. There's a card reader nearby. So, the card is at the monster. He gave the security card to the beast from the east. <sighs> oh, Chad is gone. You peek in the window and knock to get your brother's attention. He startles out of a deep sleep, accidentally kicking the horn which echoes through the structure. He stumbles out of the car. Really? I just got comfortable. Nah, I get it. So we have to head somewhere else? Uh, yeah, afraid so. Yeah, thanks for chauffeuring me around all night. There's something I need for us. No problem. What's our next destination? Well, that beast was at school. Um... Um, all right, the car screeches out of the structure, swinging out onto the street. You get to school in no time flat. Um, I still didn't open that goddamn shed, though. That is also still here. I mean, I was able to open everything with the goddamn screwdriver. But apparently not that here, sadly. I wonder. I don't think that there's anything in my inventory that would make sense. To be honest. Um, so the beast from the east was inside over here. We go into the forest, and then we actually head right. You're it, the beast shouts. I excited to play game. Can't wait, so hungry. Sorry, you say you don't have time for this. I give up. You win. The beast shakes his head, plodding towards your on its enormous clawed paws. A shame. Quickest way to not win is not play. Oh. It still kills me, though. His maw drops open and he lunges toward you. 
with impossible grace. Okay, okay, okay. So I need to do something with him. You feel overwhelmed by a strange energy just looking at it. I can see a magician wearing it. You feel safer having it around. I don't know. A freely laced placemat brings the class to any dining occasion. I don't think the beast wants that. Let's get invisible, the sixth book, book in the Goosebump series. You used to have so many of these. Some old video games you've been holding onto for years, including your favorite, Adrift of Vega. I don't think he wants to play. So energy, I need energy. Let's try that here. <laughs> You hold out shrunk hair with trembling hands. The beast falls to one knee and bows its head, submitting. Impressive loot, me not realize you're such high level. It backs away nervously, maybe we play again someday. The hulking brute shuffles backward, facing you until he reaches a safe distance. He then bounces off into the trees. Oh, you turn and head back. Wait, no, 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 no. You said, he, he said, it has the key card. This tree is so big it must be incredibly old. If you wrapped your arms around it, your fingers wouldn't touch, not even close. Oh, dig. Well, I think I know what to do here, though. The shovel slides easily into the dirt. After the free, after free scoops, you uncover something. It's the key card. So, Chad, let's go back. Where you add We're gonna go to the mall. Let's go to the mall. He guns it out of the lord and you make all the lights. The lord's deserted as Chad looks for a good spot. Yeah, we were here, so we're gonna go to the entrance. And we're gonna now use that beautiful key card that we just unlocked from that thing. And enter. The door slides open as you approach and you walk right in. You take two steps into the town central gallery, you scan the area for any signs of... The mall is closed for the day, vacate the premise immediately. This is not a drill. The security guard roughly shoves you out of the door. Next time there will be consequences. Disciplinary consequences. When you head stop spinning, you collect yourself and consider the situation. You will need to keep a sharp eye out for that security guard as you sneak through the mall. The mall is eerily quiet when it's empty. Your footsteps echo for what seems like miles. You find yourself standing near the demo unit of the very best in massage technology. So all I need to do is be quiet. Pam pamphlet. This might be worth reading later, so you tuck it away. What the heck is it? A pamphlet from the mall discussing the history of benefits of massage, specifically something called hydrosage. Oh, that's probably that thing here. Let's take some massage oil. Employees only. 
You're surprised at how much of a non-event this is. You're not sure what you were expecting, but this is just a hallway. Okay, we, we did go back. You climb into the massage chair, taking every few seconds to make sure nobody's watching. Ah, that's nice. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's go back to the entrance. You stop near the large decorated fountain at the center of the mall. Take a coin, you pull your hand away as soon as it touches the water, it's boiling hot. There's no way to reach those coins as long as the fountain is full, not without burning your skin off. I could, however, use this thing here. No, no, not in the air, in the... Weird. Candy shop. You head toward Cavity City. Thoughts of sour worms and chocolate making your mouth water. The store is bright, colorful and smells like strawberries. Definitely a candy destination. You step closer to the ga cash register. This scale weights your bag. The more candy inside the bag, the heavier it will be. Hmm. You can't walk around with loose candy? You take one of the bags, candy prepared to meet Dana. Candy. I mean, I don't really know what I need that for. One pound of candy for ten, what a deal. Oh. Oh, I accidentally emptied it. That's not what I wanted to do. PB cups. Also, what is that jelly? Taffy? Oh my god, it grabs your face in the vines, grab a flavor and pulls you into the tiny plastic bin. You struggle, but it's no use. The creature doesn't bite you, it just keeps sucking until there's nothing left. I got... I got... I think the jelly killed me. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Let's head to the fort food court. You stand at the mouth of a broad food court, a sea of cheap tables and chairs, bordered by restaurants of every variety. It looks like this note has some directions on it. You might need these to navigate the back hallways. Ooh. Hello, I wanted to jot down a quick message to help you get settled on your first night. I actually worked at that mall before you. It's my last week now. I know the back hallway can be a bit overwhelming, but it's actually not that bad if you remain calm. The directions to reach the security office are once you get inside the back hallway, go straight, turn left, then right again, and move straight. So, straight, left, right, straight. Two more rights, and a final left. And straight ahead to the office. Uh, I, I probably should write that down. So, this is just... Oh, this is the walk tiger. Ah, the one that... Sheet was talking about about you always waffling about the fries at Chick Cadley. They're impossible to resist when hot. A tray never want to let an opportunity pass by. You help yourself to the plastic tray. Phone move. You shuffle to the secluded payphone corner. 
You're standing at the payphones just outside the food court restrooms. It smells bad. It does look pretty bad. And there's also a security camera. Stand there too long to make a call, they will know. So that probably means I need to... Oh wait, the toilets are over there. Hmm, so if I want to take down the security cameras... I probably... Oh wow, there's more. The seemingly endless rows of stores continue on either side of the mall. One kiosk stands alone. Cards. You can never have too many playing cards. You've been behind one thing. You have been behind on things lately. Maybe this calendar will help. You take the action figure just in case you find time to play later. You pick out a strap that catches your fancy and pocket it. You carefully open the delicate chest and are surprised to see there's a key inside. Oh, a key? Store key. Let's not get greedy. We've been greedy all the time. You fold the shirt into your bag. Chad would probably get a kick out of it. Can't even head further. The mall comes to a natural end with Mayfield's department store. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, I mean... I didn't expect that game to be so tricky, to be honest. I... Do... Oh. Oh. Is that the cop behind us? Like, here in that corner? He's coming, right? He's going to kill me now. I think he's standing behind me. That must be him. I don't know if I'm safe here. Um, okay. Okay. We made it to the mall. We made it outside of the house, of our house. We made sure that our house got rid of the ghosts that were living in there. And now it's time to check out more of that mall. <laughs>